All right, so it's the morning of the 16th and we are off the Transamerica Trail and headed to Yellowstone because Christy wants to see Yellowstone. I ain't gonna lie, I wanna see Yellowstone too. Never seen it. Pretty excited to go see it. It's about four hours from here. We're actually gonna stop and get a hotel on the way. Um, not near Yellowstone because it'll be too high, but uh, somewhere in the vicinity of one of the cities. So that's the current situation. We've been raising cows for thousands of years. And still and yet, they have not figured out that they can walk past the cattle guards. That's little more than what some bars going across a, a shallow ditch. And the reason they won't walk across it is because they think that they're going to fall into it. Thousands of years, this is how we've held cows back. <laughs> Unreal. So we are on day 16. What has been the number one thing that you miss going without? If you had to put the number one thing. Shower. <laughs> yeah. I'd, shower. I'd probably say shower too. You know, I, I want a hotel because I think that when we get to the hotel, we'll get rejuvenized and rested up and all that. Not that we haven't had extreme, not that we haven't had rest, uh, we just haven't had extreme rest. And what I mean by that is we haven't had the luxuries of a really nice, soft, comfortable bed uh, with, you know, room temperatures and TVs and cables and stuff like that. And that stuff really doesn't bother me as much um, as the, you know, just the comfortable bed with the with the room temperature. But other than that, I'd say that, I mean, realistically, we haven't gone without. Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, you know, shower is top priority. So I figured that the solar shower would be a tad bit more useful than what it is. And, and the reason that it's not is because there's a lot of shade throughout the day. So if you're on a really hot day, and I have a feeling that coming back through like Southern California and going through the Mojave Desert and stuff like that, I have a feeling we'll probably use the um, solar shower a lot more. Uh, but I'm telling you, the, the most ideal setup for doing this type of traveling and overlanding and stuff like that, to me, would be one of those... Um, it would have to be one of those uh, camper things like I, I saw on the truck yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, with the you know with the water tank and the hot and cold water and, and all that good stuff. And, and I think that if you have one of those, there would be no need to ever get a hotel. But but yeah, so as far as luxuries go, that's that's really about it. Other than that, uh, we've had everything that we need, and we've eaten good. We've eaten better than some people eat at home, you know. And we're enjoying beautiful scenery every day something new and here comes some of those windmills that christy loves so much <laughs> traveling through idaho christy and i have seen truck after truck after truck full of potatoes can't help but to think of how many that truck actually that you see right up there going across the thing potatoes. is going to get filled up with potatoes and we've seen a couple of those trucks ride by just both trailers full of potatoes that's a lot of potatoes thinking of all the things that potatoes are used in. There's a lot of stuff potatoes are used in. And it's got me wanting a potato. I kind of <laughs> want a good want a I kind of want a good potato from like a, a McAllister style like a place. Yeah, and I bet there's a place somewhere in Idaho that we could oh, we I'm could sure. get a potato. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> you know, the other thing out here in um, Idaho is the speed limit. Um, on the interstate is 80 miles an hour and I think that that is just a phenomenal idea it's something that the East Coast should really adopt from the the western states is the 80 mile an hour speed zones um, I, I catch myself with a lead foot very often at home and I I really think that 80 is just a good a good speed 80 is not a bad speed it's good safe speed for people like me even though I want to do 90 but at 80, I feel okay. At 70, I feel like we're going too slow. So Christy and I, while waiting for hotel check-in outside of Yellowstone, 
stopped at a little store and look what I got. Yeah, buddy, I'm so happy to get one of those right there. And for only 50 bucks. I know that seems high, and it is, but most of the time they're a lot higher than that. So 50 bucks is a win in my book and no more of the stupid one pound tanks. All right, so we got the little five pound tank at Cow Ranch Stores in Rexburg, Idaho. And uh, we are now headed to the Motel 6 in Rexburg. And we're gonna take a little break from camping. And the reason is, tell them, Christy. The low is 35. That's a bit rich for our blood. We've fought the cold now for a couple nights and uh, a little break from it wouldn't be bad. Check this out, huh? Motel 6 in Rexburg, it's a brand new facility. Like 70 bucks. And it's just nice to have luxuries, especially that. What? All right, so we have our hotel room. It is the Motel 6. Motel 6 for- Very nice. What's under $70? Yeah, right at 70 bucks, which I After think is- taxes and stuff? That's about what you're gonna have to pay anywhere you go to get a hotel, but I'm just glad we finally got a hotel. Uh, we went to Blister's Barbecue here in, what is this place called, Rex, Rexburg? Hang on. Rexburg. We're in Rexburg, Idaho. We went to Blister's Barbecue after going to Magic Suds Laundry, so that way Christy could uh, <laughs> get some laundry done. And the we bag we did was full. yeah we did. I need mean it. it was full. Not to mention we just found out that it's going to be like in the 30s whenever we go through Oregon, which is well uh, and the rest of this state. And the rest, yeah. So we're not happy about that by any means. So. Then we went to Blister's Barbecue, and Christy remembered that I had said, vaguely mentioning, <laughs> some ice cream. So now... No, it wasn't ice cream, it was yogurt, and then it turned into ice so cream. So now, <laughs> we have to go get ice cream, which, you know, it is what it is. So now we're on our way to go get ice cream, and then... Then, are we in for the night? Yes, Can we then yes, enjoy yes, our hotel baby. room? Yes, baby. Okay. Sorry. Alright. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Good morning. It is day number 17 on USA on Dirt. And we are leaving the Motel 6 in uh, Rexburg, Idaho. And we're fixing to head over to the Walmarts. And we are going to pick up a, uh, what are they called, Mr. Buddies or Mr. Heater, Buddy. Heater Buddies or something like that. Thanks, Mr. Buddy. The reason is, is because it is supposed to be cold for the uh, remainder of our trip across um, until we get into, into Oregon and then at which time we'll go down um, to California. California is supposed to heat up again, uh, but Christy and I don't do real well in the cold which is the reason that we stayed at the Motel 6 last night. Woke up this morning and it was 36 degrees, I think I said. I thought you said 22. No, 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 that was Yellowstone. Oh. It's 36 degrees whenever I woke up this morning, and uh, but it was 70 inside the hotel, so nonetheless, we were straight. So we're on our way now. We're gonna to go to the Walmart here in Rexburg, Idaho. Then from there, we're gonna to go to Yellowstone National Park where the temperature is even lower. The low today, or the low whenever I checked it this morning uh, was 24 and it felt like 22. So uh, cold weather is upon us, unfortunately. We had hoped to miss out on the cold weather, but it's all right because that means that the desert's gonna be pleasant when we get there. So. That's the current situation. We'll check up with you when we get back to Yellowstone. Okay, so while at Walmart picking up a uh, Mr. Buddy or Heater Buddy thing, whatever, um, I decided to take a quick count of the trip money, uh, or trip expenditures rather. And we've come to the conclusion that we've already done uh, nearly well, actually, according to according to my odometer, I think we left at thirty-seven thousand eight hundred, and now we're at forty-two thousand nine thirty-five, which puts us at the five thousand mile mark already, and we're only in Idaho. Now we have gone off the trail quite a bit to go to some of the national parks and some of the other areas and stuff like that, so that would make sense. But it, 
at that amount, if you factor, if you divide that up by 200, which I figure is about a half a tank of gas, all right, um, I've been stopping every every half a tank of gas, I've been stopping and spending at least $20. Um, so, you know, you can do the math on that, and, and that's, you know, that's where most of the money for the trip goes. Um, the most common question that I get asked is, how much does it cost for this trip? And that really is like asking for, um, you know, what's the best uh, tiger or what's the best car to drive or something. It's, it's There's so many different things that play into a factor um, for, you know, one, in preparation, two, the actual trip itself, stuff like that. But the biggest thing that, that you have to factor in for the trip is going to be the, uh, the gas. So uh, the very first time that I took this trip, I factored in, uh, I think it was $1,500 in gas, um, and I went over that budget the very first time. This time I factored in, gas did go up, I factored in $2,100 to $2,200 in gas. And um, hopefully I don't go over that this time because that's, that's just a lot of money in gas. Now, I'm getting, in my rig, I'm getting, Let's see, I reset it before we left. I'm getting 15 and a half miles to the gallon. And that's, um, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually decent. If you think about it, I'm loaded down to the gills. I've got all kinds of stuff in the back, okay? I've got a roof rack that's got stuff on it, um, including about four gallons of water that's tied to it. Um, the roof rack itself is not aerodynamic at all. So, that and then I've got all this mud and, and muck and stuff that's still stuck to the forerunner. So realistically, 15 and a half miles to the gallon, going up and down through the mountains, off-roading, using the four-wheel drive, stuff like that. It's not really, uh, that's not really too bad. So make sure that you factor in your gas and then once you factor in your gas, add more money to it because it, it probably won't never be enough. So hopefully that helped clear some questions up, uh, but that is probably the number one question that I get asked all the time right next to um, if, if you can do it in a two-wheel drive truck and the answer to that question is no you cannot do it in a two-wheel drive truck uh, but I'm not gonna say you can't uh, I'm gonna say that I wouldn't I wouldn't even dare attempt it in a two-wheel drive truck uh, whether or not you want to or not is, is on your own so other than that, we're headed to Yellowstone National Park. We got our heater buddy from Walmart, and we got some uh, good good breakfast from a local place called uh, JB's. JB's. Local little place called JB's there in Rexburg, Idaho, don't you know? And we hadn't had any potatoes since we've been in Idaho. <laughs> We'd really like to have some. I'd like to have an Idaho spud. They had them on sale at Walmart for $30. Yeah, to be more careful. Best current situation, we'll see you at Yellowstone. Chrissy said that they had showers here at Yellowstone National Park, but I came prepared. I don't need a shower. Right, Christy? No, you've had enough. I took three showers at the hotel because I wanted to embrace the shower life, you know? So that's what we did. Christy and I were just, just discussing. It's 52 degrees right here. Which is, you know, that's decent. We can, we can stand that. I told her that's kind of like hoodie weather. Hoodie weather's, hoodie weather's good weather to us. Of course, 52 to some might be shorts, short sleeves. But uh, we like 50s. So we're gonna go see the uh, what is it? Lower Geyser Basin. Lower Geyser Basin. And then Old Faithful. Old Faithful. So the mud pits are there and um, did you find the uh, the spring yeah mammoth spring is also on the way no you got to break off and either do lower geyser basin and then old faithful turn around and go all the way back up gotcha so either way you gotta go back forward what about the prismatic spring i haven't found that oh. anyway this park's beautiful and stuff everywhere. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Check this fella out, huh? Just chilling. That's really cool. 
Yeah, man. You gotta understand why I'm in hell. People are like following him. Yeah, he's got no clue. He's just like, what the hell's going on here? Apparently, they don't condone you walking on that. They say that that's a thin crust and scalding water. Check out the mud. How red the rock is right there. And this stuff's just been going off for ever, I guess. It's crazy that like literally right there is clear water. Right over there is nothing but mud. So okay, so this thing goes on to explain that the red spouter, which is that one, um, if you travel back in time, 1959, you would find yourself on a grassy knoll and the red spouter didn't exist. This damn thing's been spouting since 1959. The animals get up on it. And it's hot. Oh, Check out the geyser. Yeah, it's a geyser. Little sprout action. It's pretty cool. On the way in, the radio was talking about some kind of epidemic diarrhea. <laughs> Imagine it. Well, nationwide. That's why you don't want to dang touch none of this. It's pretty cool, though. Stinky. That's pretty cool. Wow. Pretty cool stuff, man. Scale of 1 to 10. 10 being the coolest. What would you give that so far? I'd give that a 10. So That's far, cool. I'd definitely give it a 10. Yeah. It's just, you could sit there and probably explore for hours on the reasoning and why that stuff just goes off and then the other thing is it's just constant like we just have